good afternoon uh, i know this is a pre branded session yesterday in the other hall we had a technology workshop where we had uh, a detailed discussion on the introduction of insulin pump indications and little bit on continuous glucose monitoring and of course ambulatory glucose profile and there we had a very interactive session with uh, hands on experience so uh, today we will be having another very interactive and important session on insulin pump and for that we are having uh, dr jyotidev keshavdev a single sentence to introduce him is the brain behind jyotidev's professional education forum so i'm feeling really proud and happy to be part of the jpf organizing committee so with that i would like to invite jyotidev sir the topic here is artificial pancreas the science sensation and ambulatory glucose profile reinventing glucose variability over to you sir thank you dr arun sanga he is the one heading our unit in trivandrum because i i always keeps moving and he is the one running the centers and uh, welcome all of you once again to uh, jpf 2015 and this is our second day from nuva therapies we are moving on to nuva technologies <coughs> and uh, these are my disclosures and what is the new what is uh, new about this technology this is a question being asked for more than 19 years now when is this going to be fully automatic when will this be fully automatic and this has been a question since the discovery of insulin in the 1920s and this question continued through the discovery of insulin pump when is this going to be completely automatic and very recently we have been exploring more into the continuous glucose monitoring graphs and i am sure that most of you are familiar with the cgm and cgm in type 1 diabetes and cgm in late type 2 diabetes appears almost similar with glucose going up and down all the time and this is very similar to a roller coaster ride where the patients are disappointed the physicians are disappointed despite a near normal a1c there are higher chances of hypoglycemia and obviously higher chances of occurrence of vascular complications of diabetes once we thought that insulin pump will be an answer of course insulin pump can minimize the glucose variability and here you have an insulin pump and this is a device the reservoir is filled with rapid acting insulin and you have a small cannula and over here is connected and the cannula is in the interstitial fluid subcutaneously placed and on the opposite side you have a sensor and very recently coinciding with these conferences and conventions in india we have the fortune of having the latest insulin pump which is the first in the artificial pancreas generation and that's the 640g insulin pump just introduced in india It, this will be very soon available in kerala too what is so special about this device a picture paints a thousand words in the upper panel you have the continuous glucose monitoring from the existing bio insulin pumps it is still here going up and down with frequent episodes of hypo as depicted here in contrast in the lower panel you have the cgm recorded 
from 640G with almost complete elimination of hypoglycemia. With more than 90% of the time, the glucose is remaining within the green acceptable range. And that is the beauty of the new technology. Probably the first artificial pancreas which is getting launched in the Indian market, which is a 640G. <coughs> it was way back in 2004 that we all started using insulin pumps in our practice. Insulin pumps were tiny devices comparable to computers, though it was available since more than 50 years. The newer ones are the smart insulin pumps. In the year 2006, we started using the real-time insulin pumps and the size of the sensor became smaller and smaller. And in 2007, this was the scenario. You have the sensor over here and you have the pump and the pump is displaying the interstitial glucose values. And this was the beginning of the new era of sensor augmented insulin pump therapy or the real-time insulin pumps, the integration of two technologies, subcutaneous sensing of glucose and subcutaneous continuous infusion of insulin. And this got replaced in the year 2012. And this was the first VO pump which we used in our center, the 530G. And now it is a 640G. And this was the first pump in the international market which could suspend at the onset of hypoglycemia. Yesterday we were discussing about the major challenges treating diabetes. And the first major challenge is with hypoglycemia. So all the newer medications and all the newer technologies are to address the risk of hypoglycemia and to overcome the risk of hypoglycemia. And the revolutionary pump, the 640G, which is just launched in the Indian market, has got an additional mechanism of a predictive low glucose suspend. So now, moving on to the definition of artificial pancreas. Artificial pancreas is a misnomer. The term is a misnomer. Artificial pancreas, in addition to the glucose sensing, in addition to the insulin pump, which is illustrated here, should have one more component, one more additional component, and that is a controller. Or you may call it the algorithm. And this is the biggest hurdle to develop an algorithm which will consider all the pathophysiological changes, meal intake, exercise, anxiety, fever, menstruation, sleep, all the factors which can influence changes in the glucose levels. And historically, there were so many algorithms developed. The initial ones were the model predictive control and the proportional integral derivative. And the recent addition is the fuzzy logic algorithm. I will in simple terms describe what is depicted here, the taxonomy of an artificial pancreas design. Believe me, this is a very simple structure. Over here, you have the controller. And the controller will receive the glucose values from the sensors or you can manually put in a glucose value, which is a set point. Or you can have a range of the glucose values, for example, 70 to 120 or 120 to 180. The controller will incorporate a model of the blood glucose as part of its algorithm and the control algorithm will in turn generate an output for insulin delivery alone or in combination with 
multiple glucose regulatory hormones and this can be glucagon this can be pramlin dead and in newer closed loop designs there is in addition even lyraglutide and the insulin or the delivery can be either subcutaneous or intraperitoneal and over here you have glucose sensors you have accelerometry sensors you have heart rate sensors moving on to a couple of clinical trials which are the landmark clinical trials towards the revolutionary discovery of artificial pancreas and this is a bionic pancreas bionic pancreas will have three major components the first component is a sensor over here you have the picture of a sensor which is measuring the interstitial glucose values every 5 minutes and every 5 minutes the glucose values are transmitted to the iphone and that is a second component and over here you have the third component of the bionic pancreas one holding glucagon and the other one insulin and the two insulin pumps and the glucagon pumps will receive the data from the iphones and in turn they will be administering glucagon and insulin based on the algorithm and very recently the clinical trials based on artificial pancreas have translated to real life situations to free living situations and this is an outpatient clinical trial and in this outpatient clinical trial with the crossover design they have compared a wearable bihormonal artificial pancreas with the conventional insulin pumps all the existing insulin pumps are considered sensor augmented conventional insulin pumps except the one which is recently launched this week and in this clinical trial uh, they had both adults and adolescents and the results were similar those who were on bionic pancreas had a mean average glucose value which is much lower compared to those on conventional insulin pump and this is the percentage of time spent in hypoglycemia significantly less in bionic pancreas and there were closed loop designs where they have incorporated the use of lyraglutide in type 1 diabetes not in type 1 diabetes it is in type 1 diabetes and here you have you see the demonstration of minimal or reduced post meal glucose excursions in type 1 diabetes patients in this closed loop design the use of insulin pumps now have very strong evidence in type 2 diabetes as well i will briefly go through this clinical trial which is recently published in lancet and that is the optimized clinical trial where they have recruited close to 500 subjects insulin pump in one arm and multiple daily insulins in the other arm and we were quite excited that our own study in type 2 diabetes published 7 years back being quoted in the same clinical trial publication over to the benefits which are pleiotropic benefits with the use of continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion and with disease with respect to disappearance of neuropathy hypoglycemia and with satisfaction in relation to use of insulin pumps and we have also carried out a randomized clinical trial which was present recently at boston at the ada where we have demonstrated reversal of erectile dysfunction in men with type 2 diabetes while using insulin pump therapy and these changes could have been because of the disappearance or elimination of hypoglycemia less time spent in hypoglycemia and more time spent in euglycemia and minimal glucose variability which is already demonstrated we have also done a study which was presented 
at ATTD in Barcelona and this study is available in DTT on the acceptance of continuous glucose monitoring as a routine investigation in type 2 diabetes. Till then we were using continuous glucose monitoring only in selected subjects with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And these were with the conventional time-tested devices. But very recently, and our first patient was this one, and it was on 25th March 2015, when we started using the new Abbott Libre Pro. And this is a professional device, a very tiny sensor, which doesn't require any expertise, which will remain there for more than 14 days. Sensing glucose every 15 minutes and need to just calibrate within two minutes, which doesn't require a glucometer for calibration, another breakthrough technology, probably a combination of both glucometer and continuous glucose monitoring, which most probably will be replacing the glucometers in another three or four years based on a different technology that is a wired enzyme technology. So the sensors are improving. The sensors are more sensitive in the hypoglycemic range. The sensors with new artificial pancreas designs are very sensitive in the low glucose range since that is the biggest barrier. And introducing a new concept and this is a concept of ambulatory glucose profile. And if you look at the internet of the PubMed, you may come across publications related to AGP since 1980s, when the International Diabetes Center at Minneapolis published data on retrieving, downloading data from the glucometers and developing graphs based on the self-monitored values. And this is the one which can be generated from the continuous glucose monitoring data from ambulatory glucose profile continuously over 14 days and all these graphs are collapsed or collated to look like a 24 hours model graph and this model will tell you the median and you have the interquartal range which is between 25th and 75th percentile and you have the 10th and the 90th percentile and the glucose variability is visually measured when these glucoses are widely spread. And these newer sensors, the newer technologies in physics and medicine have revolutionized our quest towards the invention of artificial pancreas. And moving on to some of the clinical trials just published by Haider and his group. And this has appeared very recently in Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology. A couple of days back in the August of 2015, again outpatient clinical trials comparing three modalities. Number one, the dual hormone artificial pancreas. And number two, single hormone artificial pancreas and number three the conventional insulin pumps and these were the studies conducted both in children and adolescents with type 1 diabetes let us look at the results of this study very impressive and there were 33 children mean age of 13.3 years in contrast to the previous studies published by Heather if you look at the data on time spent in the hypoglycemic range when compared to conventional and a single hormone artificial pancreas, the one with bihormal designs have zero percentage time spent in hypoglycemia. Amazing. And if you are to look at the episodes of hypoglycemic episodes during the night, again, compared to the conventional insulin pumps and the single hormone designs, the dual hormones, it is against zero. 
there is another group from israel and they are again the pioneers in artificial pancreas design headed by dr moshe philip thomas dane and tade batillo from slovenia and from germany very close friends and associates for us and dr moshe philip who is the man behind ATTD conference which is the biggest technology conference for diabetes in the world they have recently published their studies in 56 type 1 diabetes patients on artificial pancreas and this is again in an outpatient setting fewer episodes of night time glucose values again the same findings and they have designed a new algorithm based on the fuzzy logic algorithm which i have described a while ago and this is again the md logic artificial pancreas technology and they have designed a glucose sitter fully automated closed loop system which is a revolutionary technology and why revolutionary why this is part of history of diabetes why because we were searching for an artificial pancreas for more than 80 90 years now and this has become the first ever artificial pancreas software the glucose sitter algorithm and the md logic artificial pancreas system to re- get a regulatory approval in the world and this is now approved in the europe and licensed for use with metronic insulin pumps so this is soon going to be a reality this artificial pancreas algorithm integrated with insulin pumps is soon going to be a reality and a short overview of the timelines and we started here the sensor augmented pumps which were the open loop designs and then we had the auto suspend or the low glucose suspend mechanism and now we have the predictive low glucose suspend mechanisms and in between we had the hybrid closed loop hybrid closed loops are the systems where you have a closed loop algorithm running in the background with manual bolusing during the day time and now the search is towards a purely completely closed loop system which is multi hormonal in design already they have finished the clinical trials back to my patient who is still dreaming when is it going to be fully automatic will it ever become fully automatic and now we have an answer we physicians now we do have an answer it's soon going to be fully automatic and the first artificial pancreas has just been launched in the indian market the 640g the revolutionary pump with predictive low glucose suspend mechanism and thank you very much for your patient hearing we are exactly on time thank you thanks a lot dear sir so now it is open for discussion we will have some questions then the new pump which is just introduced doesn't have glucagon <coughs> the one with glucagon and other glucoregulatory hormones are going through the clinical trials <coughs> but the multi hormonal ones with the algorithm will probably be commercially launched in 2 years so before that another pump which is 670g with an algorithm will be launched but the one which is recently launched if you look at the data on the graphs it is almost similar to a fully closed loop system because once hyper is gone 90% is done Bionic pancreas, 4.2 yeah. 4, 4, 4. risk of hypoglycemia against 7.1. But later on you said the hypoglycemic episodes are zero. No, no. In the bionic pancreas we have uh, two insulin pumps. There were two tandem T-slim insulin pumps. One with glucagon and the other with insulin. And that was an earlier one. 
And the second one that I have shown, comparing the three designs, is the one which is just published by Haider and his group from Canada. And that is where they have proven that hypo is zero. Technology is very fast advancing. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, Jyoti, yeah. it is an <coughs> absolutely fabulous presentation of, of the technology. And uh, I, I just want to ask you that what the current status of the Abbots? Uh, I mean, they, they came, they, they demonstrated, but uh, I mean… Now we, we, had a, we had a workshop yesterday. Anybody from Abbott over here? The Freestyle Libre Pro, because Dr. That, Rohan, where is he? <coughs> I feel yeah. uh, that… It is a revolutionary that, design. That, yeah. That's going to be very, very much close to our… Uh, I mean, close to us to use. I mean, that's… I mean, you will be using everything. But I am telling that for the ordinary diabetes, the, the, the grass variety of diabetes… Absolutely. That will be one which is most useful. I think so. Can we have a demonstration? Are you here? Is it possible to have a demo? We… Yeah. Because you one, because we are blessed with your presence, sir. Thanks for your kind words, no, sir. sir. <laughs> yeah. It's very important. You know, yeah. I, in IDC, <coughs> I spent, you quoted IDC. Uh, IDC, yeah. In, in yeah. It's called Park Nicolette. That is called Park Nicolette. And the Bergen still find his name in every pump, navigator, whatever pump you say. Yes. And uh, hmm. he has also, in one of his letters, he has written that he has written it quite high. So that's why I think that we most suited to our country. I, I, what do you feel will be most suited to our country? You have given a bird's eye view of everything from the beginning, the open loop till the dual hormone where the hypoglycemia is zero. But which one will be most suitable for our country for the majority of the patients? For the majority of the patients probably we will require the completely closed loop system. But this one, the 640G, if they can reduce the price, I am not aware of the price, then I think almost 100% of the type 1 will benefit, 100% of type I, 1 patients. And I must tell you that uh, <coughs> in, in Sweden, in the United States, majority, 99, 95% of on type pumps. 1 are absolutely unpumped. You go to any type 1 diabetes, he's unpumped. Am I correct, Ranjit? We, they don't even know how to inject. And it was so gratifying to see that everybody unpumped. I attended a camp, I attended a few of my colleagues, uh, and they are all type 1 diabetics, they are proud to show the pump. And they are as normal, uh, you are absolutely correct. So that will be the most ideal one for the type 1. Yeah, yeah. yes. So, Dr. Asim, are you there for the… <coughs> Only Rohan is there, I am sorry. The one that we were discussing, Dr. Das was discussing is a small sensor. And of course, when you are using the continuous glucose sensor, it is measuring the interstitial glucose values which may not be exactly the same as the capillary glucose, there will be a slight difference which is defined as a lag time, but you get the trends, you get the pattern. <coughs> yeah, you can, you can go. You, you can have a demo? Yeah, you can just demonstrate. Can you have a live demonstration because everybody would like to use it? <coughs> you don't have a sensor with you, then it's fine. Yeah, that's fine, that is fine. Yeah. <coughs> you can do it, yeah. <coughs> because this is the first time that there is a sensor technology which can be continuously used for 14, 14 days. So because all the other sensors we were using only for 6 days or 7 days and this one uh, works continuously for 14 days. But there are, of course, certain limitations. Some, some of the sensors will work only for uh, 10 days, some of them work only for uh, 4 days, but majority of these sensors, they will work for 14 days. There are certain hiccups since it is a new technology and this technology is introduced now only in India. It is not available in the US. And there is a slight difference in the device which has been introduced in India versus the introduced which is available, the device which is available in the Europe. In Europe, we ha they have a reader which is black in color and that is a scanner. The sensor will be over here and they can scan and they can have the glucose readings every one minute. And uh, the one which is available in India at present is the one where the sensor will be at your office. And you can use the same sensor reader to read the sensor data of as many patients you like. Thousand patients you can use the same reader. And you can use the reader to download the data from day one onwards. <coughs> if you like to have the 
excuse me if you would like to have the data downloaded at seven days or eight days you can download the data but studies have shown that if you are looking at the cgm the cgm which is recorded on the first day will be different from the cgm which is recorded on the seventh day the pattern will be totally different dr renjit was actually presenting this uh, during eva dr mohan's convention last week and he has beautifully shown how the pattern stabilizes when you do the same for 14 days so once it is 14 days you have the patterns which are almost uh, similar and it will develop into a shape and the algorithm will help generate a shape and that is going to help you with the assessment of possibilities of hypoglycemia you can divide it into five zones there are traffic light systems to detect the areas where you have to be careful to change the lifestyles to change the uh, drugs to decide on dietetic changes and this can be easily done since the translation of this data into clinical practice is very easy is it possible or we <coughs> So uh, thanks for the time given to give a demonstration on Abbott's uh, flash glucose monitoring. It hardly takes two minutes, but uh, still, if you want more information, we have got a stall outside. But I'll just give a brief introduction how to use this uh, uh, the reader and the sensor. The sensor, this is a dummy scan. How it sticks on the patient and it reads every 15 minutes and continuously for 14 days, and it reads the interstitial fluid, and it has got around 1,344 readings for 14 days. so when you connect this uh, sensor and with the reader when you get the get transferred this all the readings into the reader and when you connect this reader into the uh, laptop you will get the ambulatory glucose profile where where dr jyoti dev has presented this and it hardly takes a fraction of second so we call it as a flash glucose monitor you just swap it the all the data gets transferred into the reader and when you connect this to the laptop or where the software got installed you will get the am ambulatory glucose profile along with that you will get the day wise profile of the patient so you will get the complete glucose profile of the patient along with the agp so when you have time please do walk into our stall we will give a will be happy to give a complete demonstration along with the video thank you thanks a lot for the time it is called as flash glucose monitoring this is the this is the reader no this is is a sensor 